um, we planned our bus so it looked like the modern day bus you see every day, but we added several Six innovations onto it. Like this, the ball is it's an omnidirectional wheel which is used for a zero degree turn radius turn. <laughs> we also have used um, several touch sensors, uh, touch sensors, color sensors, and an RFID sensor. Um, we the touch sensors are are used for safety. Um, the safety is to, in just in case there's a crash, we push any one of them, the program will automatically shut down the program. Um, just in case of anything, uh, any malfunction with the robot, between communication between this and the Home Depot, which like tracks it and keeps in track with it, uh, they can automatically override the system and drive the bus from here until they can get it back to the Home Depot and change out with another one. So, time to talk about the program. Um, first, this was actually our first year programming in NXC, so a bit of a challenge there. Uh, what it's doing right now is basically following the line through our scale model city. Now, as it goes with every movement, it reads the RFID sensor. As it reads the, or it goes through and it reads the RFID sensor. If it finds an RFID sensor, it checks the five character byte address on the RFID against a list of five character byte addresses stored in a two dimensional array in the program. If any of, if the, or if the address it read matches an address in the array, it stops, waits for people to load, and then continues on its path. Um, now, as you'll notice, there's a little, there was a little black box in the center of the robot. That is a high technic touch multiplexer. What it does is all four touch sensors on the robot connect to that multiplexer, which sends a single signal of I2C data to the NXT, allowing all four touch sensors to be run from a single section in the programming. A little slower, but it works really well. So if any one of those is pressed at any time during the um, program, it shuts down. Uh, in real life, as uh, my friend mentioned, it would call for emergency services because that would indicate that there had been an accident. Car um, so what we have here is an autonomous tow truck. Um, we also have a teleopic controller. And um, so what we're going to do is we're going to, we take input from, uh, from the car as to where it would like to go, one, two, or three line. And um, we pick up the car from its location and tow it across the line to where it desires to go. Um, the practicality on this robot is um, really great because the fatalities right now, average per year, of the robot or of tow, tow truck drivers is 70 per year, which is a very large amount. And with the autonomous tow truck, you can increase the amount of uh, communication between autonomous cars, which uh, we heard about this morning in the presentation, which would also help increase the safety of our people. Mechanically, this robot is interesting because very complex. It has three main points. It has four-wheel drive, four-wheel steering, and two differentials for the front and the back. They all work hand-in-hand -hand because the steering allows for half of a turn radius rather than having front-wheel steering. The steering is also rack and pinion just like in normal cars. Differentials allow it so that the outer wheels turn a lot faster than the inner wheels, which is needed when we have the tighter turning radius and the four-wheel drive is used to power all four wheels because we have the extra components. It is a lot heavier and the extra power is necessary. The other component that is very important to our robot is the boom, the actual towing apparatus. It's a third-class lever powered by a linear actuator and then the winch is uh, connected to the hook. Hook is a uh, double pulley system and the winch is powered by two worm gears which give it a tremendous amount of force. Um, the main programming technique we used is multi-threading. Um, one of the problems we've had in previous competitions is with line following, so there's loops where it's not checking for the silver line, and if it crosses the silver line while in one of those loops, it'll miss it. So we changed the, the program so that it was multiple tasks, so that it's always looking for the silver line while it is still following the black line. 
um, it, it'll cross and the silver lines at the end are to stop it and then it would drop the car. Um, the, with the two brains we had to use Bluetooth connection between both of them which um, with five motors and two brains with the three brain limits or three, excuse me, three motor limits on each brain it, we had to use two. Hello, um, my name is Alex um, and we are the Pace Invaders, our team here. Um, we are presenting a quadricopter today. Uh, I'm going to pass it off to Romy. So my name is Romy Boimer. Um, I was a part of the build team and the design team on the quadricopter. And pretty much what we wanted to do is uh, we've seen quadricopters done at a university level, but we wanted to prove that as a group of senior students, we're pretty much all in grade 12. We have one grade 11 student on the team. We wanted to show that having had four years of robotics experience um, in different competitions like FRC, we wanted to show a quadricopter um, in a fairly inexpensive way and also uh, with pieces that are fairly easily accessible. And so the whole system cost us about $1,500. Uh, okay, my name is Andre, and uh, I'm going to talk about the materials that we used. Uh, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about the materials that we used while making the quadricopter. Uh, the entire thing is made out of aluminum, lex sand. Uh, there's carbon fiber for the landing gear, and uh, the rods that go like from the body to the landing gear are piano wire. Uh, the reason we chose aluminum is because it's really lightweight, it's robust, and it's fairly cheap for our purposes. Uh, we added on this shield in order to like be able to fly it indoors and like it, it's a big safety thing for us. Uh, originally the three platforms you see they were made out of acrylic so this is our landing gear from when it was like made out of that but we uh, realized that if it were to drop or something it would crack like this because ac acrylic is really uh, brittle so we switched to Lexan which is a lot more flexible and we've been having positive results with that. Hi, I'm Sam. I program the control system for the quadricopter. So the basic, it's based on PID control. So the idea is we have sensors and we have outputs, which are the motors. And so we use the sensors to determine how quickly the motor should spin to maintain the kind of control that we want. So for example, we have a gyrometer and an accelerometer on there. So we can use those to determine which way is down, how quickly we're rotating, things like that. So let's say we're rotating toward this direction, so we're pivoting like that. We would want to increase speed to these two motors and decrease speed to the other two so that the quadricopter will stabilize itself. So we do that through PID control which is based on three components, P, I, and D, which stand for proportional, integral, and differential. So proportional control means the farther that the sensor is from the position that we want to be reading, the more we have to correct. So if the accelerometer shows that we're tilted very a uh, large angle, then we would increase speed to these two motors significantly and then significantly drop the speed of the other two. And so integral control is summing the deviation of the set red values from the goal values over time. So if we're constantly tilted a slight amount in one direction and we keep correcting it, but maybe the wind keeps blowing us the other direction, we would notice that if, and then the quadricopter would compensate for that so that we would maintain a stable position. And then differential control is based on how quickly the values are changing. So if we are tilting, what back toward the stable position. What we do is notice that. We don't want to overshoot the stable position. So the differential control tells it to not go as quickly so that we maintain the stable position rather than overshooting and oscillating. 